Good afternoon, everyone. Now we are here to our next topic in high steps and hypothesis testing. We are proceeding in the t test for a mean. These are t tests. It is bell shaped. It is symmetric about the mean. The mean, median, mode are equal to zero and are located to the center of the distribution. The curve never touches the x axis. This is the similarity of the t-test for the mean and the normal distribution curve. The t-distribution differs from the standard normal distribution in the variance is greater than 1. The t-distribution is a family of curve based on the degrees of freedom, which is the number related to the sample size. The t-test is a statistical test for the mean of a population and is used when the population is normally or approximately normal distributed and O is unknown. The formula for the t-test is t is equal to x bar minus mu over s divided by the square root of n. The degrees of freedom are or the df is equal to n minus 1. The steps in hypothesis testing using the say test. Number one, state the hypothesis and identify the claim. Two, find the critical values from the table app. Three, compute the test values, make the decision to reject or not reject null hypothesis, and then summarize the result. Let's have an example. Find the critical t value for alpha of 0 0.05 with a degree of freedom of 16 for a right-tailed test. This, here is the solution. Find the 0 0.05 column in the top row and 16 in the left-hand column where the row and the column meet and the appropriate critical value found it is 1.746 so this is the critical T value Let's have another example. Hospital infections. A medical investigation claims that the average number of infection per week at a hospital in south southwestern Pennsylvania is 16.3. A random sample of 10 weeks had a mean number of 17.7 infections. The sample standard deviation is 1.8. Is there enough evidence to reject the investigator's claim at an alpha of 0 0.05? Let's see. First, we state the null hypothesis. The null hypothesis is equal to 16.3 and the alternative hypothesis is not equal to 16.3. Step 2, the critical values are positive 2.3. 262 and negative 2.262 for an alpha of 0 0.05 and degrees, degrees of freedom of 0 0.9. We can find it. We can find the degrees of freedom by subtracting 1 to the total random sample, which is 10 weeks. We get 9, and we can get these values through the values in the table. Then, next is to compute the test value. By substituting to the formula, we can obtain t is equal to 2.46. Then, we can draw it in this figure. Reject the null hypothesis since 2.46 is greater than 2.262, like what is shown here. The negative 2.262 and positive 2.62 shows the critical, the boundary of the critical region. This shaded area, together with the other side, are the critical region and the value that we obtained earlier in step 3 is resides within the critical value or the critical area That's mean, that means we are going to reject the null hypothesis. To sum it up, there is enough evidence to reject the claim that the average number of infection is 16.3.
Now we have the steps and hypothesis testing using T value in the method of P value. The first step is to take the hypothesis and identify the claim. Next, compute the test value, then find the P value, then make the decision to reject or not reject the null hypothesis, and finally summarize the results. Let's take an example. Jogger's oxygen uptake. A physician claimed that Jogger's maximal volume oxygen uptake is greater than the average of all adults. A sample of 15 Joggers has a mean of 40.6 milliliters per kilogram and a standard deviation of 6 m ml over kg if the average of all adults is 36.7 is there enough evidence to support the position claim at the alpha of 0 0.05? Let's compute. Step 1. State the hypothesis and identify the claim. The null hypothesis is equal to 36.7 and an alternative hypothesis is greater than 36.7. Then, we compute the test value. Then, the test value is as follows. By substituting to the formula, we now obtain the t-value as equal to 2.5. 517. Then we're going to find the p value. Find the p value looking across the row with degrees of freedom of 14 and table f. You see that 2.517 falls between 2.145 and 2.624, corresponding to alpha of 0 0.025 and alpha of 0 0.01 since this is a right tail test hence the p-value is greater than 0 0.01 and the p-value is less than 0 0.05 or the p-value is less than 0 0.025 but greater than 0 0.01 that is the p-value is somewhere between 0 0.01 and 0 0.25 the fee value obtained from the calculator is 0 0.012. We can draw it as follows. We have here 0 0.01 and 0 0.025 and we have here the alpha of 0 0.05. Reject the hypothesis since fee value is less than 0 0.05. That is, fee value is less than alpha. There is enough evidence to support the claim that the jogger's maximal volume oxygen uptake is greater than 36.7 milliliter per kilogram. <coughs> the formula for the SATES proportion. We have your say is equal to p hat minus p all over square root of p q divided by n. Wherein p hat is equal to x over n as a sample proportion P is the population size, and N is equal to the sample size. Assumption for testing a proportion. The sample is a random sample. The condition for a binomial experiment is satisfied. NP and NQ is greater than or equal to 5. Steps in hypothesis testing using proportion. First, state the hypothesis and identify the claim. Find the critical values. Compute the test value. First, it is necessary to find. And then, make the decision. Replacing $1 bills with $1 coins. A statistician read that at least 77% of the population opposed replacing $1 bills with $1 coins. To see if this claim is valid, the statistician selected sample of 80 people and found that 55 were opposed to replacing the $1 bills at an alpha of 0.01. Test the claim that the least 77% of the population are opposed to the, to, to the change. Step 1. We should state the hypothesis and identify the claim. We have here the null hypothesis is equal to 0 0.77 uh, that was the claim and uh, p is less than 0 0.77 find the critical values since a is equal to 0 0.01 the test is left tailed the critical value is negative 2.33 
We can compute for the test value p hat is equal to x over n. Substituting, we get 55 divided by 80 is equal to 0 0.6875. P is equal to 0 0.77 and Q is equal to 1 minus 0 0.77 is equal to 0 0.23. Substituting in the formula of say is equal to P hat minus P divided by square root of P Q divided by N is equal to we will get we will obtain an answer of negative 1.75. Step 4. Do not reject the null hypothesis since the test value does not fall into the critical region as shown in the figure here. Yeah. This is the critical region of negative 2.33 and this is the value that we obtained on the previous step. Then, to summarize it, there is not enough evidence to reject the claim that at least 70% 77% of the population opposed replacing the $1 bills with $1 coins. Let's have another example. An attorney claims that more than 25% of all lawyers advertised. A sample of 200 lawyers in a certain city showed that 63 had used some from form of advertising. At an alpha of 0 0.05, is there enough evidence to support the attorney's claim? Use the p-value method. Step 1. State the hypothesis and identify the claim. We have here p is equal to 0 0.25 and p is greater than 0 0.25 as our claim. Then we can compute the test value. We have the p-hat x over n is equal to 63 divided by 200 is equal to 0 0.315 p is equal to 0 0.25 and in order to get q we are going we are just going to subtract the p from 1 and we can obtain 0 0.75 but then by substituting the given value we were we will obtain the value of 2.12 Then, in step 3, we are going to find the p-value. The area under the curve for z is equal to 2.12 is 0 0.9830. Subtracting the area from 1.00, you will get 0 0.0170. Then, the p-value is 0 0.0170. Step 4, we are going to reject the null hypothesis since 0 0.01 is less than 0 0.05, that is, P value less than 0 0.05 or the alpha as we have it is shown here it is it the area of 0 0.01 coincides within the area of 0 0.05 next there is enough evidence to support the attorney's claim that more than 25% of the lawyer use some form of advertising. We now have the steps in hypothesis testing using x squared test for a variance or a standard deviation. First, state the hypothesis and identify the claim. Second, find the critical values. Third, compute the test values. Fourth, make the decision and reject or not reject the null hypothesis. Then finally, summarize the result. Let's have an example. Find the critical g square value of 15 degrees of freedom when alpha is equal to 0 0.05 and the test is right tailed. We have here the figure and our table. As we can see in the table, the corresponding degrees of freedom in the left column is 15, then the critical value located with the two columns meet. Degrees of freedom of 15 and alpha of 0 0.05, we have here the value of 24.996. Another one, let's have find a critical g square for 10 degrees of freedom when alpha is 0 0.05 and the test is left tail test. We have here another example figure and another.
table. When the test is length tail test, we're, we're going to take note that the A value must be subtracted from 1. That is 1 minus 0 0.05 is equal to 0 0.95. The left side of the table is used because the chi square table gives the area to the right of the critical value. And the chi square statistic cannot be negative because as what is shown in the representation earlier, it is represented as x squared. The table is set up so that it gives the value for the area to the right of the critical value. In this case, 95% of the area will be on the right of the value. For 0 0.95 and 10 degrees of freedom, the critical value is 3.940. Another example, find the chi square value for 20, 22 degrees of freedom when A is equal to 0 0.025 and two-tailed test is conducted. We have here the solution. When a two-tailed test is conducted, the area must be split as shown in the figure. Note that the area to the right of the larger value is 0 0.025 which is from 0 0.025 divided by 2 or alpha divided by 2 and the area to the right of the smaller value is 0 0.975 that came from 1 minus 0 0.05 divided by 2 or 1 minus alpha over 2 remember that the chi square value cannot be negative Hence, you must use a, vo a value in the table of 0 0.025 and 0 0.975 with 22 degrees of freedom critical values are 36.781 and 10.982 respectively for the formula of the chi squared test for a single variance we have your x squared is equal to x quantity x n minus 1 times s squared all over population variance the degrees of freedom equal to n minus 1 and where n is the sample size s squared is the sample variance and o is the population variance assumption for the chi square test for a single variance the sample must be randomly selected from the population the population must be normally distributed from the variable under the study and the observation must be independent from one another. Let's have an example. An instructor wishes to see whether the variation in score of 23 students in her class is less than the variance of the population. The variance of the class is 198. Is there enough evidence to support the claim that the, vari the variation of student is less than the population variance? Which is equal to 225 at an alpha of 0 0.05. Assume that the scores are normally distributed. First, we are going to state the hypothesis and identify the claim. We have here O squared is equal to two, 225 and O squared is less than 225. Find the critical value since the test is left tail test and alpha is 0 0.025. Use the value. 1 minus 0 0.025 degrees of freedom are n minus 1, 23 minus 1 is equal to 22. Hence, by looking at the table, we can obtain the critical value of 12.338. Note that the critical region is on the left, as what is shown here. In step 3, we are going to compute the test value through the given formula. By substituting, we have here 23 minus 1 times 198 all over 225 and we can get the value of 19.36. Then we are going to make the decision since the test value 19.36 falls in the non-critical region as shown in this figure. The decision is not to reject the null hypothesis because it is... As what is shown in the figure, this is the critical region and this value is too far away. It's located within the non-critical region. We can summarize it as follows. There is enough 
there is not enough evidence to support the claim that the variation in test score of the instructor student is less than the variation in score of the population. <coughs> Let's have another example. A hospital administrator believes that the standard deviation of the number of the people using outpatient surgery per day is greater than 8. A random sample of 15 days is selected. The data are shown at alpha of 0 0.10. Is there enough evidence to support the administrator's claim? Assume that the variables are normally distributed. We have already given values 25, 35, 15, 18, 42, 16, 9, 10, 12, 12, 38, 8, 14, and 27. First, we are going to state the null the hypothesis and identify the claim. We have the null hypothesis of 8 is equal to 8 and the alternative hypothesis is greater than 8. Since the standard deviation is given, it should be squared to get the variance. Because remember... The variance is the squared of the standard deviation. Step 2. Find the critical value since the test is right-tailed with degrees of freedom of 15. Minus 1 is equal to 14. 15 is came from for the 15 random sample of days. And then an alpha of 0 0.10. The critical value is... 21.064 as you can find it in the table F. We now have step 3, computing the test value since the row data are given and the standard deviation of the sample must be found using the formula. In chapter 3 is your calculator, it is S is equal to 11.2. Then by substituting, we have your 15 minus 1 times 11.2 squared divided all over 64 we have here 27.44 then we're going to make the decision the decision is to reject an hypothesis since the test value 27.44 is greater than the critical value 21.064 and falls in the critical region as shown in this figure Now we can summarize the result as there is enough evidence to support the claim that the standard deviation is greater than 8. Then another example, a cigarette manufacturer wishes to test the claim that the variance of the nicotine content of its cigarette is 0 0.644. Nicotine content is measured in the milligrams and assume that it is normally distributed. A sample of 20 cigarettes has been has a standard deviation of 1 milli milligrams at an alpha of 0 0.05. Is there enough evidence to reject the manufacturer's claim? Step 1, we have here the null hypothesis of 0 0.644, a claim of 0 0.644, and alternative hypothesis which is not equal to 0 0.644. Find the critical values in the test is the two-tailed test at an alpha of 0 0.05, the critical value for 0 0.025 and 0 0.975 must be found. The degrees of freedom are 19, hence the critical values are 332.852 and 8.907 respectively as shown in the table. The critical or rejection region are shown in this figure. We have here 8.907 and 32.852. In step 3, we have to compute the test value and through the substitution and computation, we will arrive at 29.5. Since the standard version S is given a problem, it must be squared for the formula to get the variance. Make the decision, do not reject the null hypothesis since the test value falls between the critical values and in the non-critical region as shown in this figure. As you can see here that 29.5 is between the two critical region or simply 
a non-rejection region. We can summarize it as there is not enough evidence to reject the manufacturer's claim that the variance of nicotine content of the cigarette is equal to 0 0.644. We now have another example. Find the p-value of x squared is equal to when x squared is equal to 19.27.4 and n is equal to 8 and it is right tailed test. To get the p-value, look across the row with degrees of freedom of 7 we obtain it from n minus 1 which is 8 minus 1 is equal to 7 in the table G and find the two values at 19.274 falls between they are 18.475 and 20.278 look up to the top row and find the A values corresponding to 18.475 and 20.278 they are 0 0.01 and 0 0.005 respectively hence the p-value contained in the interval of 0. Point, the p-value is less than 0 0.01 but greater than 0 0.005 find the p-value of when x squared is equal to 3.823 and is equal to 13 and the test is left tail test. To get the p-value, look across the row with the degrees of freedom of 12. We get it from 13 minus 1 or n minus 1 and find the two values that 3.823 falls between. They are 3.571 and 4.404 look up to the top row and find the values corresponding to 3.571 and 4.404 they are 0 0.99 and 0 0.975 respectively as shown in your tables when x squared test value falls on the left side each value must be subtracted from 1 to get the interval of p-value falls between 1 minus 0 0.99 is equal to 0 0.01 and 1 minus 0 0.975 is equal to 0 0.025. Hence, the p-value falls in the interval of p-value is less than 0 0.025 but greater than 0 0.01. The p-value obtained from the calculator is 0 0.014. We have here the steps in hypothesis testing using chi-square in the p-value method. First, we state the hypothesis, identify the claim, compute the task value, find the p-value, make the decision reject or not reject an all hypothesis, and finally, summarize the result. <laughs> Let's have an example. A researcher shows from the past studies that the standard deviation of the time it makes to inspect a car is 16.8 minutes. A sample of 24 cars is selected and inspected. The standard deviation is 12.5 minutes. At an alpha of 0 0.05, can it be conducted that the standard deviation has changed? Use the p-value method. Step 1. State the hypothesis and identify the claim. We have here the null hypothesis of 16.8 and the alternative hypothesis not equal to 16.8. Then we can compute the test value. By substituting the values from the formula, we have now 12.733. In step 3, find the p-value using the table G with degrees of freedom of 23 from 24 minus 1 or n minus 1. The value is 12.733 falls between the values 11.689 and 13.093 corresponding to 0 0.975 and 0 0.95 respectively. Since these values are found in the left side of the distribution, each value must be subtracted from 1. Hence, 1 minus 0 0.975 is equal to 0 0.225 and 1 minus 0 0.95 is equal to 0 0.05. Since this is a two-tailed test, the area must be doubled to obtain the p-value interval. Hence, the fee value is less than 0 0.10 but greater than 0 0.5, 0 0.05, or somewhere between 0 0.05 and 0 0.10. We can make a decision since an alpha of 
0.05 and the p value bit is between 0.05 and 0.10 the decision is not reject the null hypothesis since the p value is less than a we can summarize the result as there is not enough evidence to support the claim that the standard deviation has changed.